the Star Wars show, the scripts are going to be old. If you ever make it, the scripts are going to be years old. Do, are they timeless? Or They're timeless because they take place between episode three and episode four, that 20-year period when Luke is growing up. Okay. It's not about Luke, but it's about that period of when, you know, the Empire is really trying to take a thing. And it's called Underworld. So it's the it's world... It's called Underworld? Well, it's, that's a working title. Okay. But basically, it's it's underneath what's going on. Okay. And it's the criminals and the guys, uh, the gangs that are, you know, running, you know, like Wall Street, so, you, know, you know, basically running the United States. You know, Bernie Madoff. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're not worried... No, Being not as level. cost effective as you guys are in your process, the scripts are done. Yeah, there's no way. I mean, they'll only get better the scripts. Right. And um, but no, it, it's really a budget thing. How do we get it down to a cost that is commensurate with the reality? Because you know, even most people don't realize that we are the prequels only cost a hundred million dollars each, and the world of Hollywood that is nothing. And, and that's why we were so able to do something for you know two thirds less than what the average studio would do it for and why we're successful. But this is really tough because we're trying to do in one hour the same amount of effects and the technology that a two hour film has to do and we have to do it every week. Yeah. That's right. tough. Yeah, sure. And try to do it for five million dollars. Sure. But we'll get there. I hope so. You know, I mean I hope I live long enough but that's us because the normal person would just go to HBO and they, HBO would say, Okay, we'll give you eight million dollars, we own the world rights and you will you have to cast this person. That isn't the way yeah. you know we want to work and that's the last thing George wants yeah. to do. Yeah. So we have to find a way to figure out how to break even on it. It's not it's never been about, you know, making a shit ton of money. It's always about how do we break even. But also you can't do that until you kind of get a clearer idea of the direction because it's totally unreal. The, the Nielsen ratings are completely it's a complete falsehood. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's the Bernie Madoff of, you know, how you think it's all yeah. a pyramid scheme because yeah. they can't let it go. Right. Because if you do, then all advertising will disappear. Right. So you have to, everybody's holding each other up, yeah. you know, with these phony numbers. Yeah. You know, whereas I truly believe in the next three, four years, you know, you can put somebody on television, whether it's cable or whatever, and it can be disseminated if you're, you know, 50 million people can see it one night. Yeah. But how do you monetize that? Right. You know, how do you get that back to the people who made the movie? So it's on hold now. Well, the reason that's on hold, we have... 50 of the most unbelievable scripts. I mean, they're really, each one hour episode is bigger than any of the prequels were. I mean, they're just cute, and they're complex, they're dark, they're, they're adult, they're, they're, but right now, technologically, there's no way we can do them for the kind of $5 million mark, which would be the maximum we could do. Five million, and, and five million an episode. Five million yeah. an episode. And that is because there's so much digital animation because we have so many digital characters. So I think the idea is we'll just hold off, you know, we'll wait, see if any there's any major breakthroughs in the next year or two, um, and just see what's going to happen. And then once we can kind of come up with either a virtual set software that works really, I think that allows us to travel all over the world and do stuff, is that, then I think we'll all come back and revisit it mm. if we're still alive. <laughs> yeah. But what, you know, what we were saying about you... Um, you guys being able to kind of choose your own release date for Red Tails. Are you able to also, with your TV projects, like maybe the live action show, choose your delivery platform? No, because I mean, that's the big, that's one of the other big issues. Not just the cost of the thing, but also the whole business is imploding. So the, the difference between where cable was two years ago and where it is now, where network television is, you know, it's based on complete smoke and mirrors. No one knows how to actually accurately judge or gauge who's watching what yeah. um, and then if you make a network TV show instead of an hour it's 42 minutes you have 20 minutes of advertising if you don't do if you aren't so big if you're not at 15 to 20 million a week there's no there's no patience by the networks so we go ahead and make the sacrifice to make the movie finance it everything else and you know we can find ourselves on a network TV deal after three weeks you know we're gone Right. It's happened to John Wells, it's happened to Rockheimer, it's happened to you know, all the major, because they don't care, they need those numbers now. Whereas cable is much more forgiving, cable will allow you to build your audience, plus you only need two or three million people. Right. But then again, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, see you later. Uh, you, uh, 
cables, but then you have a much more limited. You know, most people don't realize that it took Mad Men over two years to get a people more than a million people to see an episode. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that at one level, if we're talking about our cost, that's just not commensurate with anything that we can right. do. And the HBO is a more difficult one because they like much more control. They want to have more ownership. That means you know they have a right to be able to tell you what you want to do. Yeah. So there's compromises each way. And I think for us, one of the other reasons that we really want to wait is just this thing. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Apple TV comes out this year. Right. Who knows what will happen in terms of how that will change the dynamics? Yeah. Yeah. You know, iTunes has never been the panacea that everybody hoped it would be. Yeah. Um, but there is some other alternative form of viewing habits that, that can be figured out a way to charge. I mean, we're not trying to make millions of dollars. We're just trying to be able to recoup. Sure. Because for us, if we don't, yeah. it's over. Right. So, yeah. So that's been part of the problem. Okay. Cost has been the major one. Then network versus cable, and then what outlet, and how many people do you get to see yeah. it, and, and you know, and the DVD market's gone. It's just you know, it's it's uh, the film business is a mess. You know, we're going to the Zigfield. It's thirteen dollars and fifty cents to see a movie. You know, by the second or third week of a month, you know, if you're a kid and you're on an allowance, you have the choice of filling your car up with gas. Um, most important, getting laid or going to a movie, forget it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's true. It's a shame, but it's true. It's, so the Netflix model is isn't viable for you guys either. Like, you not care about really. Those. It's because again, it still doesn't have enough of a of, of, of enough profit participation for us immediately to be able to recoup. Yeah, yeah. But there is a form out there. It just is kind of all still coalescing. Yeah.